Okay, folks, she's a little shy, so give her a hand when she comes out. Eyes on me. Good. We have a new attraction. Think it'll scare the kids? This will give the parents nightmares. He just went and made a new dinosaur? Probably not a good idea. It's killing for sport. You got 20,000 people with nowhere to go. We're going after it with everything we got. We're safe in here, right? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Copper Lights podcast, where we take shit seriously. Uh, we have a full crew again tonight. Uh, let's see. Now, well, what you guys just saw was the uh, Jurassic World trailer, the new one. Um, this came on during the uh, – it had a special spot during the Super Bowl, and that was pretty cool. Did any of you guys watch the Super Bowl? I did. No, I didn't care oh. for it. Yeah, I care. I was working, so I couldn't even if I wanted to. Which yeah, I'm not even into like sports or football, but we had like a social night type thing that, so I was just like, okay, well I'll go, and so I went, and you know at least I got to see the Jurassic World trailer, and it was actually the first one that came on, and um, this one was shorter. I think the last, the first trailer was like what two minutes long or something like that. Yeah, this one was a minute. Yeah, this one was like a minute, and they actually showed a lot more um, in this trailer, I feel like. They had a lot of really cool new reveals. Um, let's see, some things that stood out to me in the trailer were um, the scene Pirates. with the, the stampeding um, herbivores, like the, the stegosaurus and everything. That was pretty sweet. Um, then, of course, lots of more footage of the Irex, and then that scene with the uh, with the pterosaurs that attacked uh, all the people. So, what do you guys think of the uh, of the trailer? It's definitely a lot more Irex, which I honestly didn't expect because I thought he wanted to keep it a secret until the actual film was released. That being said, uh, I guess we should talk about Irex a little later, but. Yeah, we'll save we'll save Irex for later. Um, what about the uh, the scene? I think my favorite scene was definitely when the pterosaurs attacked the crowd. That was pretty cool. My favorite scene was the the uh, stampede part because I want to see more herbivore action. I really hope we get that. Yeah, I really do. Yeah, I have to agree because the herbivores usually kind of get shoved aside in favor of the predators. They do. I feel like it's been like that for most of the movies. Um, like in the first one, what, there was the Triceratops and the Brachiosaurus, and they they kind of symbolized – like the herbivores symbolized the more majestic, beautiful part of Jurassic Park, whereas the carnivores yeah. were the more aggressive, deadly part. And yeah. I feel like – and it was kind of the same way in, in, in the, the two sequels as well. Like, I think the closest they got was the Stegosaurus in The Lost World when it was defending its baby. Yeah. And the Triceratops yeah. in the camp scene flipping that's, the, car, flipping that's the cars. True. That's true. I love that scene. And the Pachycephalosaurus when it rammed the, the truck. Yeah. That was pretty sweet. So I feel like... Yeah, I, I agree. I feel like we're definitely going to start seeing some more herbivore action, hopefully, in Jurassic World. Um, that being said, though, we we got a lot of different shots of their uh, their Apatosaurus, their Stegosaurus, um, and then also, notably, their Pteranodon and their Dimorphodon. And I have to say, I am a little bit disappointed with... Um, their 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 uh, their creative process that they did with some of their dinosaurs, I feel like they dropped the ball a little bit. What do you guys think? 
Definitely yeah, I Pterosaurs. Agree. I think the Dimorphodon looked okay. The ter- the Pteranodons, though, it's like they took a step back from JP3 because they looked really nice in JP3 aside from, like, you know, like the teeth. But that was, that was like a sort of minor detail. Whereas, in, uh, from what I could see in the Jurassic World trailer, the actual models looked pretty bad. Like, the, the legs and the overall build, it didn't look right at the time. Yeah. My biggest... I, oh, I'm sorry, go on, Fred. No, no, I was just going to say that I prefer the JP3 ones. It's... Yeah, was, yeah, the JP3 ones definitely, and I don't like how they disregard canon like that. They're smaller, for one, and they can pick up a human being with no problem. While in JP3, yeah. the the pteranodons, a huge pteranodon could barely pick up a full-grown man. Yeah, <clears throat> well, and consider, too, that the last three movies, including Jurassic World, have had different variations of pteranodon. Um Oh, yeah, for real, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it first yeah. appeared in Lost World. Yeah, yeah, and granted, those were more like... I think those were based on the the species of Pteranodon that was reclassified as Geosternbergia or something like yes, that. Yes, it was, yes. Um, and then the second one, or the the ones in the third film, were based more on the, the typical Pteranodon. What, what's that one called? I forget that species well, name. Sternbergia or something? Yeah, something like that. But um, the ones in the third one, of course, they they had the teeth and everything, and they were a lot more aggressive than the ones in the second one. I mean, as far as we can tell, because obviously they didn't do much. You know, we just saw yeah. them like at the end. But clearly, um, clearly the ones in the fourth one are a major deviation. And one one thing I will say this about how I feel, like all the dinosaurs in the first three movies even in jurassic park 3 something just about the way they looked and and moved was very natural to me and i'm i'm not getting that feeling with the with the dinosaurs in jurassic world so far what do you guys think definitely agree yeah i don't understand why a stegosaurus would be galloping but yeah that was odd i found that very odd yeah I just I don't really know exactly what I'm trying to pinpoint, but I see what you're trying to say because yeah. the other films were their movements were so natural and they were based off actual animals that would dress world that kind of seemed like they winged it. Yeah, I think everything that's... looks more like uh, more uh, cool. Yes, definitely. Clean driven. It definitely where seems every, to be where cool. it's more. It looks more like an animated movie than a bunch of animals walking around. Yeah, and I think. You know, and obviously, the first three films, like even, like obviously the first two were directed by Steven Spielberg. Um, And the second one, Steven Spielberg closely oversaw the production, so it still had a very Spielbergian feel to it. But the, the fourth one, obviously, Spielberg was a producer, but as far as I know, he hasn't really had much in direct involvement with it at all. Um, plus, uh, the, the, uh, the special effects company, what is it, Legacy Effects now or something? Formerly yeah. Stan Winston Studios. Not to mention them, um, after, after Stan Winston Studios, after Stan Winston, Winston passed away, I think they made a lot of changes to the company, um, as the, the name change would suggest. And I feel like, like, I don't know who exactly is in charge of, like, doing all the concept art and designing for the creatures. I but know this. I think whoever took that took that task up um, did a very poor job of consulting of consulting like references and things like that because to me like I think I think if anything the the pteranodons especially um, they really go to show just how how little references were used because at least even though the the pteranodon in Jurassic Park 3 had teeth they at least resembled like very closely resembled the actual anatomy of a real pteranodon and it did kind of look very natural unlike this one that just looks like a little kid drew it or something exactly yeah it just looks it just looks dumb to me you know and and of course i mean i'm sure i'll still probably enjoy the the whole scene but 
I'm just I'm just disappointed with with the lack of I guess creativity they you know put in some of these dinosaurs or you know or pterosaurs in this case. But I know uh, I know one of the bigger um, one of the bigger ones that people and literally one of the bigger ones that people are really um, really critiquing hard is the mosasaur. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, stop. <laughs> now it's, it's pretty it's pretty funny how the mosasaur we haven't gotten any new clips of it. It's like it's still the same uh, shot of it jumping out of the water and grabbing the shark. It, I'm starting to feel like muffled. Muffled. Oh, okay, oh yeah. Sorry guys, uh, David's mic is acting a little funny tonight, so um, he might be talking and phase out. So. I was saying, I'm pretty sure that's all the Mosasaur does in the whole movie. <laughs> Otherwise, you would think like, you would think they would give it just uh, like at least a hint that it actually does something in the film besides well, grab. Yeah, or... but think about that. We've had two trailers and not mm. one sign of T-Rex, and T-Rex is obviously going to be in the movie somewhere. Yeah. Which really? Oh yeah, but T-Rex me. is T- T-Rex is T-Rex, man. They're, they're not trying to show him out so soon because everyone's like. You know, it's the return of a king, so to speak. I, I'm yeah. pretty sure S- since they, you know, since they dropped the the Irex reveal a lot sooner than expected, I'm pretty sure they're trying to sh- like keep T Rex held back because yeah. he's, you know, yeah. It, yeah. Well, yeah. she is like the dinosaur everyone's kind of coming to see, especially since they've shown on the site that it is the one from the first film. They're trying to yeah. really hype it up and stuff, so they're kind of keeping it hidden. Now. Now wait a minute. Is it the one from the first film? Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's the, same the site indicates it to be so because the uh, oh. Jurassic World site has these. Um, I want to call them sprites, but like these um, these renders of the uh, T Rex, and has those. It has scars on its neck that correspond to the scene with the Velociraptor. It's quite literally. Uh, someone scene, right? had said something that it was. So, I think there was an official. Say that it was the same female. Hmm. That, uh. It would make sense for the ruins. They find the ruins, they find the T Rex. Yeah, that slipped by me. That's interesting. I actually really like that. And speaking of that, I know there's. Besides the T Rex, there's a lot of other content that the trailers have not shown us yet, you know, including an entire, like, trek into the quarantine zone of the island, which we see on the map they released on the Jurassic World website. There is a quarantine zone kind of near the the top part of the island Hmm. where apparently some of the old stuff is. Yes. Hmm. Now, my only question is, like, the... Like, the park, because we have this really cool map of Jurassic World, the park and everything, but the quarantine zone, I, I don't really understand, like, what the point of it is. Like, is that where they intended for, like, the old visitor center to be and all that, or is that just kind of, like, the area where the people or, like, all the workers managed to shuffle all the dinosaurs, you know? Because I feel like the old, like, the original park map, the the old... Visitor center and everything was in the same general area that the new park is at. So yeah, not... I think they might be disregarding Canada a little bit there. So I'm not sure exactly what they're like doing, and I don't know if they'll like explain that or if that's just something we have to come up with ourselves as fans, like we have to do a lot because of all these things, especially with Jurassic Park three. But I guess that's old news. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I'm really looking forward, and like, obviously, they filmed at the abandoned Six Flags in New Orleans, um, so we're going to be seeing some footage of, like, a roller coaster, I guess, or something from the old park, which is going to be sweet. Um, so, cool. so we're going to be seeing stuff that they originally planned, but we didn't get to see in the first film. Yeah, so that, I'm really looking that forward to nice. that. That sounds nice. Sounds really cool. Yeah, I actually remember when they were filming in New Orleans. I was, like, keeping Facebook updated with where they were filming. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I just slipped my mind. They moved two steps to the right. You heard it here, folks. 
And I, I, I was so, I was so jealous because they had like hundreds of extras in Jurassic World, as we see in the trailer. And if only I lived closer. Yeah. You know. Ugh. Well, I didn't say that because I actually know somebody who uh, was on Jurassic World, I believe, as an extra, and I think I actually saw her in the first trailer like you could barely see her because she's like in the very periphery of the uh of the shot you can see like her <laughs> off, but it's like i could tell that was her she's it's just, uh, right there, right there, right there. Oh, you're, you're right facing there. out <laughs> that's oh, pretty sweet dude yeah and then i also like this is kind of on the side but i saw I saw a really interesting and kind of sad post on Facebook about an extra in Jurassic Park who recently died in a car accident, oh, and like his yeah. last like big thing was being in like his favorite franchise, which is pretty sweet. Damn. That's yeah, I like that. Sweet. I saw that post. Yeah, but the only shot of him in the trailer so far is him like running across the screen as pterosaurs are attacking him, which is kind of funny. Which is really ironic. <laughs> yeah, and it all they also said. Or his family or whatever also said that he was an extra in the part of the filming they did in New Orleans. So that'll be interesting. Which oh, which yeah. indicates, you know, obviously it doesn't it doesn't say much, but it indicates that there are guests in the New Orleans film shots. So my question is, did they touch up the abandoned park to make it look like the new Jurassic World? Or did they leave it be and somehow guests got to the quarantine zone where the abandoned um, park attractions were? It leaves a lot of questions open, but it's very interesting insight into some some parts of the of the movie we haven't gotten a glimpse of yet. Um, but uh, my biggest question is. Um, what the deal with the pterosaurs is exactly because there's just like this huge flock of pterosaurs mm. for seemingly no reason and they just start attacking you know that's that's actually a good point and i my my thought is that the irex which we'll get to in a minute here when it escapes as we see it does in the trailer um, that it like breaks into the holding area or whatever where all these pterosaurs are being kept, and that's how they get out. That's what I think. I think yeah, because he did – Chris Pratt did say that he was killing for sport, like his character was saying that. Yeah. And, sin- and then he, at that time he was tending to an apatosaurus. So I'm guessing the D-Rexes or I-Rex is going through all of the <laughs> – He's going through all the <laughs> different enclosures trying to eat up as much things as he can or something like that. I don't yeah. know. Hey, Fred. But, yeah. I think, they, um, I think they had a patasaurus with animatronic. <laughs> Whatever, okay. man. Okay, <laughs> okay, you two. Now, I will say this. I, I do Terrible. think it's animatronic as well, so I'm afraid you're the minority here, Fred. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if it is animatronic, but... I'm just but, saying it looked um, like CGI to me. But yeah, that's and that's interesting. If it is if it is animatronic, that means um Colin Trevorrow Animatronics really look like did. CGI. Yeah, it, it is weird cuz I I'll be honest, I I didn't really think anything of it. I thought it was CGI until I took a second look at it myself, honestly. Yeah, I didn't think much of it because because it just it was just it, it was so like clean and smooth with the rest of the the trailer that I just didn't you know not to mention it was like a blink and you miss it shot but you know that's aside the point um, now anyway um, probably the biggest part of the trailer that um, we're saving for one big discussion here is the IREX. Now, we haven't um, discussed the IREX on our podcast since back when it was still D-Rex. So to give you guys a little update if you haven't been following as closely as we have, um, the original rumors of a mutant dinosaur in Jurassic World were, of course, of the the, uh, Diabolus or Diabolus Rex or whatever, the D-Rex. And it was supposed to be a T-Rex, Velociraptor, Cuttlefish, Snake hybrid. Um, But then more recently, 
it was announced that the name was actually Irex, Indominus Rex. And now, apparently, according to the website, it's actually a genetic splice of a few different theropod dinosaurs and doesn't have any snake or or a cuttlefish or anything like that in it at all. I think the um, exact species were Carnotaurus, Majungasaurus, Gignosaurus, and all those little Rugops. Rugops, Rugops, yeah, so three-fourths of Bellasaur. Which makes no sense. And I have to say, I think we were all pretty disappointed by how the D-Rex, or I'm sorry, the I-Rex actually looks because we had a lot of speculation and i'm sure you guys saw some of our our fan concept art for the d-rex um but at least to me the final design is quite frankly very underwhelming definitely too cliche too it's not that impressive it's supposed to be three fourths of bellasaur and it just doesn't represent that very well well, at the like when we first saw the leaks of it, we didn't even know it was three fourths of Bellasaur. We still thought it was a like a T Rex Raptor yeah. hybrid, and it looked it, but it's like it just the overall design. We were wondering where the snake aspect was going to come in, and since there seemed to be none, it was just so yeah. conservative. Yeah. Like it, it just looked like a dinosaur, which is like yeah, it should, but I was expecting it to be really freaky and mutated. Your bike. Uh-huh. Well, we we, heard yeah, yeah we heard what you said, but uh, yeah. that's that's good. Um, yeah, it's it's just the thing is, like we okay, like I know I forget some of what we said about the D Rex before, but we were we were wondering if it was going to be a more a more dramatic design or a more conservative design. Um, and I would say. I would say it's both. It is dramatically conservative in that <laughs> it's just lame. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very lackluster. Now, the first the first leak, okay, because I think the first leak of the D-Rex's or the I-Rex's final appearance was that, that Lego set we all saw, or that, that little Lego yeah. model. And that, of course, was a very poor... Um, representation of it because it was just a little plastic Lego. But now seeing the final model in all its glory, I do see the resemblance there between the Lego set and the the actual thing. But then the yeah. the the first the first glimpse we got of the actual actual Irex was just a small blurry image. It was like on a a lunchbox or a cup or something, right? Yes, yeah, it, it might have been a poster. Yeah, something like that. And then later we got clearer images of them on a lunchbox. Yeah. Um, but before we got a, a like a full glimpse of it, we I think at least I was thinking, well, hey, you know, they went with a more conservative look, and it doesn't look too bad. But that was before I saw the the full HD image and just how ugly it really is. <laughs> ugly and not in a good way. Yeah, like when I say yeah. ugly. You know, we hope, like, when we say we want the D-Rex to be ugly, we hope for something that is ugly in a in a in an aesthetically pleasing way, something that is ugly in a cool way that really emphasizes the 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 fact that it's a genetic freak. You know. Yeah, uh, what Rick means is like he wanted it to be uh, more of an, a really abject design to where it was ugly, but it looked like it was intended to be so yeah. instead of it being intended to be cool and just come out kind of ugly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, pr- pretty much. Because there's a significant difference between the two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is. Um, and I, I think that's like okay. I'm gonna bring up Primeval as an example. Um, hopefully our, all of our viewers are aware of Primeval. It's a, a British TV show that aired f- between 2007 and 2011, I think. And then they had a, a, a spinoff in, in Canada, but that's aside the point. So it was, you know, basically, for those of you who might not be aware of what it is, it's basically, it was a show about um, these time portals called Anomalies where creatures from the past would come through to present times and kind of wreak havoc 
Um, and then there was this team of scientists that had to like deal with that that issue. And Primeval was known for its very dramatic creature designs. Like the first okay. the first season was okay, but as they went on, their their dinosaurs and all their different creatures had increasingly very very sensationalistic, monstrous designs. The Drake Rex. <laughs> yeah. So so I feel like I feel like that's almost the kind of syndrome we're seeing with Jurassic World here. Um including the the D-Rex to where they are they're not trying to go for anything like definable. Like they're like the artists made the mistake of thinking that making something as spiky and freaky looking as possible was going to make it cool. That is most certainly not the case in my opinion. I think the D-Rex I think the artists failed miserably. Mm-hmm. Um but at the same time you know, all this from from the Irex to the Pteranodons to the Dimorphodons to everything to the Mosasaurus even, I think it can all be easily explained away as, you know, these are just monsters created created through genetics, you know, and so that excuses, you know, maybe why they don't look like the real animals by any stretch. Except the Mosasaurus, even though it's a little big, I would argue that it, it does pretty well represent the real thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's that's obviously a nitpick we can discuss a little bit later. But <laughs> um, <laughs> but in, in general, I think they really missed, dropped the ball on that. Um, and I don't want to harp on it too much. But, you know, I'm uh, I'm sure I'll, I'll come to appreciate everything once I see it on the big screen just for what it is. But the yeah, fact for me. Uh, uh, for me, sorry to cut you off, but I, I agree. I feel like the D-Rex, it's like, it is ugly, but I think that we can appreciate it once we get to actually see it in action. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to say this right now. I don't think it's going to be the sympathetic villain that we hoped it would be. No. It's killing for yeah, sport. Yeah, unfortunately not. I can almost assure you it's not, since it's hunting for sport. He's a <laughs> yeah. big bad guy. Yeah. He's, he's a yeah. villain who apparently likes to play games. <laughs> yeah, it's the Joker of mutated dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why it's white. The I don't dark know. dinosaur rises. Yeah, Jeez. dark Rex. Except it's all white. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, Joker's pretty pasty looking too. True. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. True. pasty. Interesting. Any other thoughts on the Irex or? Any of the, hey, Rick, uh, should we should we showcase your recent drawing? Uh, sh- should we showcase some of these uh, redesigns of Irex that you you and Marty made? Yeah, um, yeah, uh, we we have been working because obviously, like before, obviously, you know, we um we did some fan concept art of the D Rex before we knew what it looked like, and um, of course, it did not live up to our expectations for it. So now that we know what the IREX looks like, um, I know I and I think Marty too were kind of working on our own fan designs for it, um, kind of giving it our own interpretation. I don't know if I'm ready to show mine yet, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm not um, ready to show mine. It's definitely not ready. Yeah, so maybe we'll we'll follow up on that in a different podcast. Um, so be uh, definitely be looking forward to that. Um, but I'll, I guess I'll give you guys kind of a hint with mine. Um, I did. I tried really hard to incorporate all the different dinosaurs that the Irex is a splice of: um, the the Carnotaurus, the Majungasaurus, the Rugops, um, the Giganotosaurus, and I gave it a very interesting, just some really interesting features that I thought that I I, I implemented specifically to really emphasize the fact that it's a genetic mutation and just a a freak of nature. So definitely be looking forward to that. Um, any What's what's your design? Any any hints on your design, Marty? Nothing too much yet. I'm just trying to incorporate every one of the species into one. It's very hard, but um, I'll uh, I'll push through it. Main one thing I will say, uh, actually, now we mention it about the species incorporated. Something I've been saying in just like various Skype calls we've had. The D-Rex, even though it is 
pretty ugly and underwhelming. <laughs> Some aspects of it actually kind of line up with what they said because the way the sh- skull is shaped, it, it almost does kind of look like a Giganotosaurus. Y- almost. Y- y- you know, it really like, does. Sort of. Like, like the reason that I have such an issue with the, the, the Indominus Rex being made of the dinosaurs they say it are, it is made out of, is because of the arms. That's what kills it for me. Because yeah. If had a Bellasaur arms, I could honestly believe it because the skull is like, it's got that kind of, uh, that sort of tapering shape that the Giga has, but it's not rounder like an Abelisaur. It's got this really weird kind of combination like, of like, all types. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's almost there, but like, I, I even just tell they, they did not intend for it to be made. Well, I don't know. I mean, like, when you think about it, the way I see it, the head does have that blunt, rounded abelosaur shape. I see that. Yeah, I can agree. Um, I also see that it has rows of scutes on its back, kind of like Carnotaurus. Now, granted, it also has spikes and things like that like on its arms that are a little weird that i think are ugly and also are a little bit baseless but i i see i kind of see that too you know it has some scutes on its back kind of like carnotaurus um and then i also see it has four digits on its um on its uh, hands including an opposable thumb um now granted abelosaurs don't have opposable thumbs but they do have four digits some of them now they're all pretty reduced but it's there so you can kind of imagine how genetics exploited that you know what i'm saying like drew it out so that's what i see yeah by like using the giganotosaurus um to kind of pull that out of it yeah and then like the arms like they are pretty disproportionately big but you know and Giganotosaurus, even though its arms weren't that big relative to its body size, it's still, you know, I can see that's where the arms may be coming from. So, I mean, I can see it. Like, I can definitely see the different components of these dinosaurs in the Irex. I just think they threw it together in a way that was very aesthetically displeasing, just ugly. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. I would much rather be okay if it was a raptor and C-Rex hybrid, because it looks like it more, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. The arms are very clearly JP Raptor. Yeah. Yeah, it it makes me wonder, because obviously the D-Rex and the different characteristics, like the different splices of it, like the cuttlefish and everything, as far as I know, those were never officially confirmed. Those were always just rumors, right? True. Were they? Not sure, because I think Colin Trevorrow had an interview about those leaks, and I think he confirmed it, didn't he? I thought so. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Plot twist. I, I could have sworn that was... The D-Rex, or I'm sorry, the yeah. I-Rex gets out, and it breaks into the D-Rex pen, and the D-Rex kicks its ass. Whoa! Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Plot twist: There's two hybrids. Yeah. yeah. Oh. oh no, guys! The Arlix is the hybrid. Oh yeah, the Arlix. I thought they were Arlix. That were right. a full thing. hybrid. Oh. What was some the... people say it was a gorilla thing. Yeah. What was the, the Arlix here? again? Like, who came up with that? Like, where did that come from? So... <laughs> I don't know. It was the dumbest thing I've ever yeah. saw, though. <laughs> all I know is that Hellraptor drew it and, and, and brought it to life. That's all I know. Yeah. No, there was someone else who did it, too. Yeah, I actually, oh, I think it looked pretty cool, and <laughs> it just, I don't whoa. know. A oh, hybrid. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> a hybrid is edgy enough for Jurassic World without doing something that's very just bizarre looking, like the, the Arlix. <laughs> yeah, like we don't need any chimeras. We just need hybrids. <laughs> technically, well, we, chimera is hybrid. I mean, technically, we don't even need hybrids. They could have just brought yeah. a different dinosaur, but they decided to do hybrids. So yeah. Fine. Hybrids. Yeah, I don't know, and you know, obviously, weird multi-species hybrids, which all the dinosaurs of Jurassic Park are anyway. But that's aside the point. Yeah. Um. A genetically hybridized mutant thing 
you know, it's not beyond the scope of Jurassic Park, and I will admit that because we do have the Chaos Effect toy line, which was pretty popular, and a lot of people did like it, and if done properly, that concept could be brought to life in the film canon very well. And I demand a show. And I just don't... And I don't know... You know, and a kind of the the D Rex or the I Rex at this point is is kind of like the the canonization of the Chaos Effect toy line, and that it is kind of the same thing. Um, to where you had like the Ankyloranodon and everything like that. You have like the you have like the the Carno Gigo Majunga, you know, whatever. So you have this weird dinosaur mutant. Carno Jigga Jungle? What? <laughs> Carno Jigga Jungle. Jigga Jungle. <laughs> Jigga Jungle. <laughs> Carno Jigga Jungle. Jungle, ladies and gentlemen. They gave the Where's Irex the, the ability to speak. And that's Carno Jigga Jungops. There you go. Yeah, yeah Carno Jigga Jungops. There you go. There you go. Sounds like a song. So Sounds I like guess a dance it's move. Confirm chaos effect in the film canon, but because it, it's it's basically the same thing. And granted, um, it's not quite as cartoony, but you know, it's still the core concept is there. The geneticists made these mutant freaks, you know, that are uncontrollable. Chaos effect. That's it. Like that, they like- could. Like, I think an alternate title for Jurassic World could have been Jurassic Park 4 Chaos Effect. That, it could have worked. Yeah. That actually looked pretty yeah. good. Yeah, and then, like, the ending of the movie or, behind, or the after credits would show that, uh, you know, plot twists are more being made and no one knows about it. Yeah. You know, and then you can throw in or some maybe- of the classics. Yeah, because maybe it's not so much of more being made, but it's just like they already made more, and now it's like, you know, like maybe starting like hats or something stupid like that. Like, they didn't know the D-Rex was going to be such a problem. They already had some others on the way. Now it's like a growing problem. Or maybe... Maybe the I-Rex is the film-adapted version of the... Wait for it. Wait for it. Ultimasaurus. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I mean, you have some pretty cool ones here. You have the the Amarga Spinus, Amargosaurus and Spinosaurus hybrid, and Chyloranodon, oh, Compsignathus. Oh, Velociraptorix. Yeah, oh, yeah. That one, to me, is just the most hilarious, okay? Because it's a velociraptor yeah. with feathers, and it's like, what? Of course. It's, <laughs> it's like, so basically, it's a normal velociraptor. It's so cool, because it can fly. Yep. It's not something with wings that runs around. It's something with wings that flies, and uh, it's huge. That would be freaking badass. Now, while we're on the subject of Chaos Effect, there was somebody on DeviantArt who drew some really cool, like, realistic versions oh, of Rodrigo the Vega. Chaos. Yes, that guy. And Was it Rodrigo? And I, I think yes. it was. And I saw them, and I was like, man, these would make for an awesome movie. And I feel like, Definitely. yeah, that could, that could work. It really could work if they did it right. And yeah. so I don't know if the if the Irex is kind of leading into a Chaos Effect type sequel where there's a whole like island full of them, you know, and so they have to go in and exterminate them. I can just see a lot of possibilities with the idea of hybridized dinosaurs, um, kind of with Jurassic World being kind of the catalyst for that. But I don't know. It's just it's interesting. I think there's so many possibilities. And at the same time, though, the only thing is, um, Jurassic World, I think, and this is a point that a lot of the critics of Jurassic World have brought about that I actually agree with, Jurassic World is a major deviation from the original theme of Jurassic Park. Do you guys kind of see that? Yeah. Yeah, I kind of get it, yeah. Because I feel like, 
I don't know. It's just... I've been saying I feel like a lot I understand tonight. where they're coming <laughs> from, but... I don't know. I don't know. It's just kind of a, a thing. Because I guess, I guess my, my reasoning behind it is... The film adaption of Jurassic Park, which Steven Spielberg was a director of, obviously. His goal with that was to bring dinosaurs to the big screen that were animals, not monsters. He even said that. He said that himself. Yeah. You know, he yeah, said he wanted to surprise people about dinosaurs. He wanted people to change their mindset because back then, before Jurassic Park, everyone thought when you think of the word dinosaur, they thought old, something yeah. is old, something that barely works, you something know? that's super slow, all that kind of stuff. And, and he really did change that. And he said, he's, this is almost exactly what he said. He said, he said, I don't want Godzilla, I don't want Gorgo, I want real dinosaurs. And that, yeah, exactly. that is exactly what Jurassic Park accomplished for its time. It revolutionized the way our culture viewed dinosaurs. And for its time, Jurassic Park was considered to be top-of-the-line accurate or nearly enough to, to the way paleontologists viewed dinosaurs at that time. And the irony is yeah. those dinosaurs in Jurassic Park became icons in and of themselves – and so as science progressed, it left those icons behind, but the icons wouldn't change because they were just that, icons. And they couldn't change. Culturally, they could not change. And so now Jurassic exactly. World is the result of that. It is a glorification of the icons that Jurassic Park introduced to the world. And so that's what it is, and that's, that's what the problem is that a lot of these critics are complaining about is that Jurassic World really is a tribute to the Jurassic Park franchise and not and not a continuation of of what Steven Spielberg instilled like what his vision for the franchise was. Yeah. So I don't know, it's Yeah, I agree. It's a qu- and, and honestly, I do see and I do understand that they could have easily slipped in accurate dinosaurs into the canon. New park, completely new genetically engineered dinosaurs, except for maybe the T-Rex and some of the other ones they got from the original quarantine zone or whatever. Um, but they could have easily slipped in new accurate dinosaurs, you know, to kind of to continue revolutionizing the way our culture views these creatures, and they didn't. You know, they went with they went with a more more traditional, you know. Homage to the Jurassic Park franchise, which I am honestly okay with. I know not a lot of paleo um, enthusiasts are, um, and I know we've also had a lot of encounters with people like that lately on <laughs> Facebook and whatnot. Um, mm-hmm. No names, <laughs> no names will be mentioned, but I know that there's Word. been. I mean, I I too understand. I completely understand. I agree with Rick. And I, too, would have loved to see accurate dinosaurs. That would be pretty cool to see accurate yeah. dinosaurs in the uh, in the somewhat sequel, somewhat reboot. But then they yeah. didn't do it. It's I'm not going to rail up about it. I'm just shrug, I just shrug my shoulder and go, oh, well, so what? Yeah, maybe next time, you know, or maybe someone else will do it. Yeah, exactly. And the good they do thing reboot is, things anyway. The good thing is we are getting to the point – where technology has come far enough to where people who don't necessarily have access or influence in big production companies or even game development companies can do their own stuff. You know, for example, I'll I'll mention Saurian, the new game that's coming out that's a a dinosaur simulator basically where you get to play as a dinosaur in its natural environment. Really cool game. Um, in fact, we might even link you guys to its website, which they just launched. Very cool. Um, those – it's an indie game. It's an independently developed game by dinosaur enthusiasts who also have um, game development skills. And so as technology is advancing, we're seeing people who want accurate dinosaurs in our culture starting to put out this own material themselves, and that is fantastic. So I feel like eventually – 
even if the Jurassic Park franchise never delivers us what we as paleo enthusiasts want, I feel like something sooner or later is going to come about that is going to satisfy our craving. Is it not? I feel like it is. Yeah. yeah. Sooner or later. So it's just a matter of time. And, you know, it's no Jurassic Park, but Saurian is the next best thing, and I am really looking forward to it. So we'll have um, we'll have yeah. a link to that in the it's description. It's not the end of there. the world. Hollywood has a thing of redoing things over and jumping on bag wa- bandwagons. Th- there'll be more dinosaur films, and there hopefully, will. and I won't doubt it, that there will be some accurate dinosaurs or more accurate dinosaurs, you know? It's just will. It's no. not the end of the world. It's just the one movie franchise. There are no. many more yeah. that can be made. Uh, going on to what Fred just said, the funny irony of what you just said is that it's like a lot of people are not supporting Jurassic World. And the funny thing is, if Jurassic World does really well, two things will happen. One, the possibility of a sequel would you know, dramatically increase. And two, other people would see that and start to more. <laughs> but yes, um, the sequel will inspire. Is what you're saying is the sequel will inspire a new generation of people who will get into dinosaurs and become the paleo enthusiasts that are trashing it. <laughs> no, what I'm what I'm getting at is that like other companies would say, oh look, dinosaurs are actually profitable. Oh, we might have more franchises, oh, we might have more franchises dealing with dinosaurs. Because Jurassic Park is all of a sudden doing that. Ah, okay. But when the original ah, Jurassic okay. Park came out, you know what movies came out within the same year? Red Bank, a dinosaur story, Thunder and X, a bunch of very small little movies that were just trying to cash in on the dinosaur theme. Yeah. So, in this case, we could have some really silly, corny, stupid movies, but I'm not saying we might actually get some seriously stuff if Jurassic Park can do that. Yeah, I, I see what you're yeah. saying. Um, the potential yeah, would be there. That's actually a good point because, yeah, like right after – like right around the late 90s, early 2000s, Jurassic Park boom is what it was where you had all the sequels coming out. There was Disney's Dinosaur and all this other stuff and Walking with Dinosaurs. Yep, you see. All it's those just, documentaries yeah, that came so out. I see exactly what you're saying. You know, uh, Dinosaur Planet, you know, all that stuff on Animal Planet and everything. And um, So I see exactly see, what that's, you're saying. That's... Because what um like like it, it sets it up to make it just like to where people actually would want to uh, invest in that because they could actually get something from it. Because also consider what's going on right now: the two biggest things in the movie industry, superheroes and zombies and shit. Zombies are starting to decline, but zombies are all over the place. Zombies yeah, because it's popular. Yeah, yeah. They make money. There are all kinds of game companies. You're out. You're out, yeah, David. You're out completely. <laughs> But, oh, okay. Uh, okay, you're back. But yeah, but yeah, I mean, I totally see your point, point. Um, and that is something to look forward to, because keep in mind, like, too, for example, um, Dinosaur Planet, which was a a, a, a mini series special. I actually have it on DVD, believe it or not, um, rare as it is. Um, Dinosaur yeah, Planet. It was out in like 2003 or something like that. Yeah, 2003. And it had, for the time, top-notch accurate dinosaurs, um, feathered velociraptors, yeah. and just the whole the whole gig. So that that came out of the Jurassic Park boom, and so we're definitely going to start seeing, as as David has been saying, um, we're going to be seeing a a Jurassic World boom, and that's going to be that's going to where we're going to be getting stuff that will satisfy our craving, and that's going to be fantastic. So yeah, I, yeah, because um, also, um, sorry to cut you off again, but it's like we have Jurassic World on the way, and there also has a confirmation of uh, the sequel, a global confirmation of you're out again, a, David. A confirmation, <laughs> a confirmation of what? Of King, some kind of King Kong remake. They're trying to do something with King Kong. Oh, yeah, again. they were doing yeah, like a, a King Kong prequel, I think, like Skull Island or something like that. Yeah, yeah, so so the idea is that, like, we're going to start getting, hopefully, some more kaiju and monster and dinosaur creature movies, yeah. and this is going to be something that this really sensationalized stuff, which is going to sort of pressure uh, people into a lot of more documentaries and 
can still get some real information out there. It's kind of like that's first point. Yeah. You're, you're going out again, but, um, but yeah, I mean, the point I, is, you, you make a stupid movie, you get a documentary, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> there you go, <laughs> there you go, that's the way to that be concise. That mic is abysmal. Yeah. Good point, awesome point, but abysmal microphone. <laughs> yeah. All oh, right. so that's pretty sweet. I have no sweet. idea why this mic's doing this. So uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think Jurassic World, even though it's not what the paleo community exactly wants, it's going to set off a catalyst here that is going to it's going to start a new age, a new age of dinosaurs in in media. And I am looking forward to the next five years because that's going to be when we're yeah, going to be seeing. Yeah, next documentary. Yep. Next, you know, new documentaries on TV. Hopefully, British in origin because. Otherwise, they'll be crap if they're American. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, a lot to look forward to. And as I mentioned briefly um, before, um, certainly Jurassic World, as inaccurate as it is to reality, is going to inspire a new generation of little dinosaur enthusiasts. You know, Jurassic Park, even though it doesn't live up to current standards, it was a catalyst. And... I became someone who is very interested and passionate about paleontology, and so e- even to where the film is inaccurate, that doesn't necessarily mean I agree with everything in there. It was just the catalyst that got me set on a path to discovery and and just really into it. So I feel like that's what's going to happen with Jurassic World as well. Yeah, so I'm I looking agree. forward to it. Hopefully. It's almost inevitable. Yeah. So there's just a you lot to look once, forward it'll to. happen again. Yeah. And so I think Jurassic World is honestly going to make a positive cultural impact on our society, you know, despite the fact that the Mosasaur doesn't have a forked tongue. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so. I mean, it's the end of the world. But I mean, it's life or death. Don't you understand, Rick? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll... They're going to start bombing me if I... I mean, D-Rex has thumbs. I mean, it's the end of the world, obviously. Yeah, unbelievable. Offensive. Offensive. <laughs> Inaccurate Spinosaurus skeleton. Oh, unbelievable. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's uh, not because it's not like they finished filming a long time ago. Before the new Discovery. They, finished, they finished filming uh, before the new Spinosaurus came out. I mean, pff, yeah, that's, pff, that's, that's get abysmal. that. They unbelievable. Should have yeah, fail. I mean, they obviously vastly changed the dinosaurs' appearance with their colors. Obviously, that's a terrible, that's a gigantic change from the other films. Yeah. Yeah. That's abysmal. Abysmal. <laughs> they obviously are disregarding canon because they are vastly changing the appearance of the animals they just are. by their colors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Unspeakable horrors. Unspeakable. Unspeakable. Oh boy! I mean, I just what can you say? You just you can't argue with people, you know. But anyway, no. uh, can't do you guys argue with <laughs> do you guys have any uh, more thoughts on Jurassic World or the new trailer or Irex? Anything? Oh man, I got one thing to say. <laughs> Let's see if your microphone there... will let you say it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm gonna keep it short. Okay. Their new toy line is garbage. Oh yes, it is. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's absolutely trash. Are you talking about the the, and, um, little, the little kid cartoony thing? No, like like their serious toys look like they suck, man. They... I haven't seen any pictures. I need to look this up. Jurassic World. David, you um, were saying something? I just sent a link. I said, go to the link, because my mic. Go to the link. <laughs> yeah. Go to the link. <laughs> just go to the link. Go to the link! link already. Oh, yeah, the new uh, LEGO Jurassic World trailer. I think I was in the middle of mentioning that when my internet dropped. Um, I don't know, yeah. I... I'm a big Lego fan, and obviously I'm a big Jurassic Park fan, so I'm going to be spending a lot of money <laughs> on um, the Jurassic World toy line. 
a Lego toy line, as well as the the new Lego video game that's going to be coming out. I'm really excited yeah. for that. Yeah, the Lego actually looks promising. Like, the other toys, not so much, but I think Lego's actually going to have a good shot. Yeah, Lego and and their and their their uh their Lego video game I assume is going to be kind of like all their other ones like Lego Star Wars and whatnot, and it's going to take us through all four movies. I mean that's going to be pretty sweet. No. I mean hopefully. No we're... way. Yeah, all four movies. <laughs> so we're talking. That would be amazing. You know, and hopefully yeah. we're talking playable dinosaurs since they're such a big part of it. But I don't know. Oh, Legosaurian. Oh, my God. Oh, because at the very least, we'll be able to – because how, how how Lego games work, obviously, is you play through different campaigns going through the different movies. And then after you unlock all the characters, you can go back and do, like, a free play. You know, <laughs> so we can take – we can take Ellie Sattler and – Give her a more central role in Jurassic Park Three, <laughs> which which is going to be pretty sweet. I I don't know. I'm really looking forward to it. I love Lego. I love Jurassic Park. Love all things Lego. So except for Chima, I don't like Lego. So Chima. yeah, I think that. Oh yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that's that's aside the point, obviously. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm really looking forward to that as well. Um, so that's going to be pretty sweet. Um, anything else you guys have to say about Jurassic World? Or did we pretty much exhaust it? I am so uh, exhausted at this point. Yeah. <laughs> you guys I've, have I've uh, been doing a lot of uh, debating on Facebook lately. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, wait a, a minute. Master debater. Trained raptors. We never talked about the trained raptors. We completely forgot about that. We did on our last... Uh, we did. We, we did on our last draft. Well, we did. It's super. Yeah, we, we already covered that. Yeah, we we did get some more footage of it though, which was kind of cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, but it's still not enough to really make a new discussion. Yeah, I, I guess not. But you know, it's there, and the raptors themselves, um, we kind of got a good look at them for the first well, time. Oh, yeah, colors. Yeah, they're different I love colors them. and everything. Awesome. Yeah, I'm 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 really liking those guys. And obviously, um Chris Pratt has already developed a, a massive um raptor handler fan base on the internet. So people oh, yeah. are uh, Oh yeah, the art that comes off of that is amazing. Yeah, people are going to be I'm gonna, really I'm going to contribute to that as myself. Yeah, people are really uh, looking forward to that. So even though it sounded like a very sketchy concept, People have been receiving it very well, so clearly it works. Um, I just, I'm just waiting to see how it's going to play out in the movie because he's taking those raptors and going after the Irex, so that's going to be pretty intense. Um, anyway, yeah, I think that's, uh, I think that's all we had to cover. Um, until there are new Jurassic World updates, we will. Um, run back to our little corners and debate with people online about random crap. <laughs> <laughs> um, little corners. Before you guys have I, uh, fun with that. Yeah. I'm not doing it. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I left that conversation. I'm done with them. Yep. Uh, so before we, uh, before we uh, head out for tonight, though, um, in one of our previous videos, we did announce that we are doing a little um, Ask the uh, Copper Lights um, so if you guys have any questions for us, any uh, any thoughts we might have not expressed about Jurassic World yet that you guys might want uh, to know what we think about or um, just questions about dinosaurs in general or maybe even questions about ourselves, feel free to uh, leave a comment in the uh, comment section below and maybe we will um, set aside some time to answer some of your questions in our next podcast. Um, <clears throat> With that, this has been the Copper Lights Podcast, where we take shit seriously. Um, thank you guys so much for joining us tonight, and we hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day or night or whenever you guys happen to be watching this or listening to this.